Hello, this is Kareen Kircher, and if it's 10 o'clock, it is our time to talk about 10 ways to weather the storm. And this is night three of talking about uh, one lesson in particular to help you get over any crisis or storm that you may be experiencing in your personal life, in your career, or in your business. Or if it is not you that's facing something like that at this time, perhaps this is something that can, that can serve you at a later date, or this is information that you can share with someone else who needs to hear it. So again, thank you for joining me, and this is a great way to end the evening and go to sleep with some peace of mind. So persistence, that's the lesson for tonight. Have you ever really thought of persistence in a positive light because I think a lot of times when people are doing everything they can to hold on, it's an uphill battle. It is a climb. It is a grind. People don't usually think of when you're persisting that you're doing something that's enjoyable. It's something that you have to really struggle and put up with until you finally get some relief. And is that really what persistence is all about? Well, I want you to think of persistence in a slightly different way. And the reason for that is, in a way, these 10 nights, 10 lessons in 10 minutes are really a lesson in persistence because it's not about giving you the information all at once and then you feel overwhelmed and you don't know where to begin. It's about giving you a little bit each night for 10 nights and then you take what you need from it. You take the most important part of it and you apply it for the next 24 hours. So there's no mystery about what you have to do, what you need to do to get further. And by taking down some notes, this is going to reinforce to yourself what you need to do. You're not simply hearing it, but you're using your other senses to write it and then to read it. So that's why I recommend having pen and paper when you do these exercises so that this is something that can really stay with you. And you don't have to jot everything down, just the part that, that helps you the most and that you can use in the next 24 hours. So let's get back to what persistence is all about. We started the series with lightening your load, getting rid of things that are not really serving you anymore, um, especially if you are in a crisis, you need to hold on to just the essentials. And essentials in terms of your time, in terms of your energy, in terms of your resources, right? So even if it means replacing yourself in some cer certain task, that's what you need to do. I'm not going to go into a recap of lesson one. You can go listen to it. What I want to cover tonight is when somebody tells you, oh, don't give up, keep at it. Well, what are they telling you to do? they're telling you to persist. And persistence does not mean going through the motions. Persistence does not mean that you're really doing the same thing but with no intention, with no expectation that things can improve. So as you persist, there needs to be a matching attitude that you are expecting things to get better that things will improve because this is really what is going to propel you. This is what's going to push you ahead so you can continue in the right direction. Um, it can be a grind, and here's, here's the reason why. If you are already in a storm, you're being beaten down by circumstances, um, you already feel pretty negative, especially if the problem you're having is partly your fault or you blame yourself for it. Uh, perhaps you didn't listen to advice. Perhaps you missed um, on something important, and now you're paying the price for it. So you have a lot of remorse. So not only are you dealing with those things, but now you're trying to hold everything together and persist. So if you don't really have a positive mindset to help you along, then it's going to make things all the harder for you right now. So again, this is why it's important to take just a little bit at a time. Focus on 24 hours at a time. Between now and tomorrow, what can you do to persist? 
what are some of the things we talked about last night in, t- in terms of taking care of yourself that you can do more of? Did you get more sleep since yesterday? Did you drink more water since yesterday? Did you take 10, 15 minutes to meditate yesterday? What did you do good yesterday that you should try and do again for another 24 hours? So again, never think more than 24 hours in terms of persisting. Um, If you start too far down the path, then it's going to burden you even more. And at a time when you are facing a lot of pressures, to give yourself, to put the, yourself under that much more pressure is only going to make you buckle under. If you're at a vulnerable p- a point where you feel that um, you can easily give up or you're susceptible to giving up, then it's all the more reason for you to be gentle with yourself. Give yourself 24 hours. If the last 24 hours weren't so good, okay, you just got another 24 hours given to you. Make the most of it persist in that new opportunity that you have and stop looking backwards at everything that you might have lost. So there's another part about persistence that this leads into, which is um, fake it till you make it, but not necessarily fake it till you make it in the sense of, um, you know, acting as if you are something that you're not. But it's more about keeping a smile on your face when things are not well. So what is the difference between being fake and, and starting to act as if you already have what you need, as if you already have what you're looking for? Well, just think about it. If you order something and you have a tracking number for what's coming, do you really worry about the fact that it's not on your doorstep yet? Probably not, because you know it's on the way. And if it is something you need, even if you don't presently have it in your hand, you have the tracking number, you know when it flies out of Dayton, Ohio, and when it lands in Newark, New Jersey, or Pittsburgh, um, you know that whatever it is you need is on the way. So part of persistence is having an expectation. And when you have an expectation of something good coming your way, it changes your disposition. It's not just about plastering a fake smile on your face and you don't really feel it deep down inside. So it's about start setting your expectation towards what you're working on, again, in the next 24 hours, and focus on that. And lastly, consider what are you actually in control of. There's not very much that you personally control. So you have to make peace with the fact that there are certain things you do not control and that you will be okay anyway. You don't need to control other people. You don't need to control pretty much anything because you are sufficient enough with the resources that God gave you to do what you need to do to get through whatever situation you're in right now. So it is important for you to make peace with the past, give up the things that you didn't do so well, When you do have the opportunity to do better, you go ahead and do that, and you persist in doing things that make you feel positive because this is the fuel that you need. So thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope you have a wonderful night meditating on these things, and see you tomorrow night. And tomorrow we're going to talk about staying in your ship to avoid isolation. So I will talk to you tomorrow night at 10 p.m.